All right, so we're back here in our code. Um, I've gone ahead and created a separate file here for us to look at, um, so we don't get it confused with the rest of our layout. And then I'll go back into my layout later on, and we'll apply these things to the actual layout. So I have a similar setup here um, to what I have uh, in a portion of my layout on the other on the other file. Um, I have a div, um, which is a block level element inside, and inside of that there's a p element, which is another block level element. Um, and as we've learned, block level elements take up the amount of width given to them. Okay, In this case, the div itself is invisible. You can't really see it. You can see the content inside the paragraph, which goes all the way to the edge of the border, because um, it's taking up as much room as the div allows it to. Okay, So we're going to mess with the amount of space the div is allowing this paragraph to take up. Okay, Now, in my CSS, uh, we've learned to call out various elements by um, just their names, right? So by either P or H1 or whatever that may be. In this case, I need to call out this div in my CSS. Um, now, in the book, um, this is what is known as a block box, in case you're wondering, on page 86 and 87. Okay, so block box, because it's a block level element. Okay, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be applying these uh, properties and values on uh, this page to this block level element box. Okay, so here's my div. Um, again, I can't just call out div in the CSS and hope that it works because I don't want it to apply to all divs, unlike my paragraph, which for now works just fine because it can apply to any paragraphs in the page. So I've given this an ID, okay? And uh, we briefly talked about IDs already. Um, it's a diff it's a, another hook for CSS to hook into. It gives us more control over individual divs, and they're used for various sections of the layout, okay? But we haven't actually talked about how to call it out here. So in order to call out a div in the CSS, you're going to start what is known as a with an octothorpe or a pound sign, okay? Followed by the name of the div ID, or in this in any element, but in the name of the ID. In this case, it's sample box one, okay? And then all the other CSS rules we've learned so far apply, okay? So you need the curly brackets, start and finish, and then you can add your declarations inside of that. Um, in this case, I'm going to go by what with the book says, um, although I'm going to skip over a couple of them. All right, so let's go uh, real quick back to your book here and scroll down. And he starts uh, with the selector, which we've used as our ID, right? And he's got display and overflow and visibility and width and height and all this good stuff, margins, padding, borders, and background. All of those are what make up a block box. Those are valid. Uh, properties and values for a block box. Some of these are not valid in other types of elements, like inline, you can't have a width or a height, and that's basically the uh, one of the things you take away from this chapter if you read through it or decide to read through it. Um, so I'm going to just start here with the first one he has, which is display. Now display allows you to change that fundamental way that the box works. Now this is a block level box, but I can change this and make it inline if I like, um, but I'm not for this example. I want to leave it as block. So. Um, if you're just going to leave it what it is, you don't actually need to add this property and value. Uh, I'm just going to add it since he has it there, and uh, leave it as block. Okay, but just know um, we'll mess with that later. You can change the display from block to inline, and a couple of other ones. Overflow and visibility aren't going to affect this yet, so I'm going to go ahead and leave those out. I'm going to go ahead and skip the width and height, um, so I can actually give width and height to a block level box. And I'm going to stick with pixels. Um, but you could also use percentages or M's if you're using different types of layouts. Pixels are just really easy to work with in terms of your layout and sizing your layout. Um, so I like to work with them. So make these pixels. Okay, don't forget your semicolons. Alright, so now if we go look at um, our actual website here, this div, sample box one, because it's wrapped around our paragraph, is going to limit the amount of space that paragraph can take up. And there you go. The paragraph now can only go as far as 500 pixels in length and can go as uh, tall as 200 pixels in height, although that doesn't look like 200 pixels. It's probably a little bigger than that. Um, but again, the div as of this point is invisible. Okay. So moving right along here. Um, next he has margins and padding. I'm going to go with padding first. So the content area for this div is the first part of the box, right? The actual content area in this case would just be whatever is inside the div, which in this case is a paragraph. So that's the content area. Outside the content area, 
the very next thing is the padding. So you can add some padding to the content itself to make it break apart from its parent box. Okay. Then comes a border and then comes a margin. Those would come outside of that. Okay. So, so far we've only um, given it a width and a height and it's applying to the content itself. Okay. The width and the height. So next I'm going to give this padding and I'm going to write this the longhand way first and then switch back to the shorthand. Um, this is also going to apply to margins the way I'm writing this out. And I'm going to write it in a specific order, although it doesn't matter what order you write them in if you're going to write this longhand, but I'm just going to write them in a specific order to show you what they then look like in the shorthand. Okay, so padding top comes first, so padding dash top. Okay, and I'm going to give that a padding of 20 pixels on the top, um, top inside of my div. Okay, so this is actually inside the div. I'm giving it 20 pixels of padding between that and uh, the paragraph. Okay. Next would come the padding on the right, and the order I'm writing these in is clockwise um, from top all the way around to the left. Okay, so padding right would come first, or second, and we'll stick with 20 pixels, why not? And then the padding on the left will be 20 pixels. Oops, that's passing. Okay. Um, and actually, I forgot one padding bottom comes before that. Again, doesn't matter what order you write them in now, but it will when we go shorthand here in a second. So, top, right, bottom, left. Okay, just remember that. Top, right, bottom, left, clockwise. And if I refresh it, now you can see there's some padding here on the left. Inside the div, there's some padding on the top. Um, there's padding on the bottom, although you can't see it because the div is invisible, but it's there. Okay, if you had another element there, you would see it. And there's padding on the right here, on the right. Um, the div actually ends way before all this white space on the left, but it's hard to see because we haven't given this any border or background to see what's actually happening there, so we'll do that in a minute. But let's uh, just take my word for it. There's 20 pixels of padding there. Um, so let's write this shorthand, because you don't want to write padding top, right, bottom, left every time you want to give something padding. So you can simply shorten this to just padding. Okay, much simpler to write. And now the order does matter. So again, top comes first, then comes right, then comes bottom, and then comes left. Okay, save that. Refresh the page, nothing should change. Nothing did change. Perfect. Okay, so because all of the values on this line are exactly the same, you can shorten this to the um, actually absolute smallest shortcut you can. And this only works if all four values are the same. Okay, so if all four values are the exact same and you don't want to write out the pixels for each one, you can just write one value. Now the padding for everything, is what this says, is 20 pixels. So every, inside of my div there's padding for 20 pixels all the way around and nothing changes. Now let's say maybe your top and bottom are going to be 20 pixels and your left and your right are going to be 10 pixels. Right? So top comes first, then comes right, then comes bottom, then comes left. If your bottom and your top match, and your left and your right match, okay? Again, this doesn't work if any of these are different, but if all four are matching pairs, okay, as they're written here, you can shorten this, okay? Save yourself some space, save yourself some time, save yourself some uh, file size. So now it's top and bottom are 20 pixels, left and right are going to be 10 pixels. This does not work if even one of these is different, so you can't write 20 pixels, 10 pixels, and then 5 pixels, okay? So it's only if all four are the same, and you have matching pairs. So now you'll see the left here gets shrunken away because it's less padded on the inside of the div. All right, so that's how that works. That's shorthand, all right? So let's see what the author has next. I believe he has um, margin next. Go back to the book here, and he actually has margin even before padding. Um, but I'm going to skip over to border. Okay, so again, it doesn't matter what order you write them in inside the rule. It does matter in terms of the values that we just talked about for padding, but the order you write them in in terms of the rule here does not. Uh, I'm going to give it a border first because that's actually what comes outside of the padding. So in order for this to make sense to you guys, um, I'm going to write it this way. Now you could write this out longhand, which would be border dash uh, with border dash style border dash color. Um, if you'd like, and you could even get further with each border being a different uh, color and style and width, but um, I'm just going to simplify this and say my border is going to be one pixel all the way around, 
and then a space, and then I'm going to give it the type of border I'd like to use. You can use dash, you can use, I think there's dotted, there's all kinds of different ones. I'm going to go with solid, so just a solid line, that's one pixel, and I'm going to give it a color. By default, it would be black. Um, you can use a keyword here, I'll use a hexadecimal value, why not? And I'll go um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, that equals black and hexadecimal value in case you haven't figured that one out yet. <coughs> And there we go. So there's the div. Now you can actually see the div. Okay, so this is going to start to make some sense. Now there's padding inside the div. The top is 20 pixels, the left and right is 10 pixels. Okay. And uh, obviously, 200 pixels is way taller than the content we have provided there. So that's what you're seeing here is the div. Okay. So now that we have a border we can mess with the margins, because the margins are what come outside of the borderline, okay? And the margins, you can write the same as the padding. So I'm going to skip the writing it longhand version, um, and just write it in shorthand, okay? And we'll give the uh, top and bottom a 20 pixels of margin, and I'm going to give the left and right uh, 15 pixels of margin. Now again, the margin is outside of the border, so 20 and 15 is what we've given it. This is the margin. And we're going to go back to our page here, and you notice the entire box now moved. So the entire div has now moved. It hasn't really moved, it's just been given some space to breathe here. Um, 15 on the left and right, and 20 on the top and bottom. Okay. And it's easier to see because of the border there. Now, I don't want you to think that you have to have a border to have the margin work. Oops. Um, I'll refresh this here. You can have a margin without a border. It's just easier for me to demonstrate how that works with the border in place. All I did was move a pixel up and a pixel to the left because that one pixel of border on each side is now gone. Okay, so I'll put that back in, and lastly, I'm going to add background dash color. So this is going to give us a background color to our div, not to the paragraph. Remember, this is all to the div. The paragraph is inside the div, and that's what we're uh, uh, we're applying our styles here to is the div, not the paragraph. So I'm going to choose aqua, nice bright color, and there you go. There's the div box. Alright. 